Hey, welcome to the Electron X Lab. In this video, what we're going to do is go through the analysis of this circuit right here. And what we've got is a parallel RC circuit with an AC source of 10 volts, 60 hertz. And we're going to take advantage of Kirchhoff's voltage laws, which say that the voltage across the source is the same as the voltage across the resistor, is the same as the voltage across the capacitor, because these components are all in parallel. We'll also take advantage of Kirchhoff's current law, which says that the source current has to be equal to the resistor current plus the capacitor current. And finally, we'll also take advantage of the AC equivalent of Ohm's law, which says that the voltage is equal to the current times the impedance of the device the current is flowing through. To start off with, let's take a look at the impedances of these two components, the resistor and the capacitor. Those are fairly easy ones to figure out. The impedance of the resistor, it's simply that five ohms with a phase angle of zero degrees, which in rectangular coordinates is five plus J zero ohms. And the impedance of that capacitor, well, it's going to be based on the reactance of it. And remember reactance for a capacitor is one over two pi times the frequency times the capacitance of that capacitor plug those numbers into a calculator and we get a reactance of 26.526 ohms. So we can use that number then. The magnitude of the impedance of the capacitor is 26.526 ohms and the phase angle that it introduces is minus 90 degrees. And of course in rectangular coordinates it has no real component. It is all negative imaginary component. The total impedance seen by this source is equal to the parallel combination of that resistor impedance and that capacitor impedance. And while it's not really hard to figure out, there's a, there's a fair number of steps in, in the calculation. Because remember, when in parallel, that total impedance is equal, to the, it is equal to one over the inverses of those impedances. And so one over ZR, well, that's one over this five ohms angle zero. So that's going to be 0.2 Siemens with a phase angle of zero degrees. And one over the impedance of the capacitor, well, that's one over 26.526, phase angle of minus 90 degrees, 0 0.0377, phase angle of 90 degrees. Now to add these two together, it's much easier if they are in rectangular coordinates. So we add that number plus that number. So the denominator part of this equation, that one over ZR plus one over ZC is 0 0.2 plus J zero plus zero plus J 0 0.0377. In order to do the inverse of this, it's much easier if that's in polar notation. So that then will be equal to the square root So 0 0.2035 Siemens with a phase angle of 10.675 degrees. So to do the inverse, it'll be 1 over 0 0.2035 and then negative 10.675 degrees. And now I'm going to move all of these values over to my little table here. That should be negative, shouldn't it? Okay, now on to further analysis of this circuit. Well, with Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that these three voltages are equal to each other. It's 10 volts, phase angle, zero degrees. Now let's figure out the currents. Let's start with the resistor current. So that's going to be that voltage across that five ohm resistor. Again, AC equivalent of Ohm's law. Volt current is equal to voltage divided by impedance. So 10 volts. Phase angle zero over five ohms, also phase angle zero, gives me a current of 10 amps with a phase angle of zero degrees. Rectangular coordinates, that's an easy conversion because there's no imaginary part. The capacitor current, this is also an easy calculation. Voltage over impedance. So 10 volts over 26.526 gives me 0 0.377 amps for the magnitude with a phase angle of zero minus negative 90. So phase angle of 90 degrees. And also an easy conversion into 
rectangular coordinates, there is no real component. It's only this 0.377 amps imaginary component. And finally, that source current, that total current coming from the source, two ways of calculating it. One, I can use Kirchhoff's current law and add these two values together. Or I can use the total voltage over the total impedance, and I'll do it both ways here. So 2 plus J0.377 amps for the total current coming from that source in rectangular coordinates. Well, that's in rectangular coordinates, in polar coordinates. So this is equal to 2.035 amps phase angle of 10.675 degrees. Okay, now let's do this calculation in the other, with the other method. Current from the source is equal to the source voltage divided by the total impedance. So that's 10 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees over 4.91 ohms with the phase angle of negative 10.675 degrees. So 10 over 4.91, 2.036 amps. So it's probably a rounding issue. That's why that last digit there is not the, not the same. And the phase angle will be zero minus negative 10.675 degrees. So 10.675 degrees. So that value matches up with that value, which makes sense. It doesn't matter which one of these two methods you use to calculate the current, you should get the same value. So I hope that helps with your understanding of AC circuits when dealing with parallel RC networks like this one. This example came straight from an open source online textbook that's available for free in the links in the description. You can see that below or whichever direction your description happens to be on the device you're using. I appreciate you and I appreciate you watching. See you next time.